Uh, my name is Eugene So. I'm uh, 26 years old this year, and I just graduated from NTU uh, School of Art, Design, Media. So I'm an artist. So let me uh, go to the first slide. Okay, this is what I'm going to talk about: uh, the future audience. So who is the future audience? Basically, by definition, it just means anyone in the future who would see your work, and. Uh, and it's this audience that has always uh, kept me going to pursue arts, like to create something or to do something. So let me just show you some of my works. K any guesses on who this is inspired by? Any guesses? Uh, yes, yes, that's the name of the work. But who? who? Yeah, Leonardo da Vinci, yes, correct. Yes, uh, so I find it quite amazing that the guy's been dead a long time, uh, like a very long time, but he still continues to influence people of today, including me. And uh, I recreated this because he lived once in a life, uh, once, once before. But yeah, I, I find it very amazing that uh, he can influence me, but I cannot influence him back. There's, there's no going back. So time is really, really interesting that way. Any, any guesses on what this is uh, inspired by? <laughs> Human Centipede. Yeah, so that's a really uh, gruesome movie. Uh, to those who, who do not know what that movie is about, I didn't, I didn't see that movie myself, but I read the synopsis and I was like grossed out. Ugh. So it's, a, it's about this surgeon who wants, to, who wants to piece three people together by connecting their digestive system to form one long digestive system. So he, he was, I would call him maybe, call, I'll maybe call that surgeon an artist because he wants to do what, uh, what he wants to do and he's pursuing his passion. So thumbs up for that, pursuing his passion. But, but, but killing people is not good. So I want to pursue my passion too. So, but I don't want to kill people. So I, Instead of uh, doing it on other people, I did it on myself and digitally, digitally, digitally stitch myself together to form this long, long digestive system uh, inspired by the human centipede. I call this the human caterpillar because I want it to be different. Uh. So those were some of my photography works. I also do some uh, installations uh, and techie stuff because I like to mess around with technology. And uh, this, in this instance, right, uh, was inspired by some of the art shows that I, got, that I go to. Some of the art shows, they name themselves uh, a new perspective, transforming vision. So I go in and I see the artworks. They were good works, really bizarre. Sculptures, paintings, photographs, really, really good work. But I find that they cannot call themselves a new perspective if the viewer is still looking through his own eyes. So if I'm still looking through my own eyes, it's still my perspective. So in reply to all of that, I decided to embark on a project to literally change someone's perspective without killing them. I got this video goggles, and when you put them, when you put them on, you will see a, from a live CCTV camera from the corner of the room and that camera is aiming at you so you see a live cctv footage of yourself so these two gentlemen over here they are they are fighting each other with the goggles on and this is what they see so it's like a street fighter kind of style where you see your own character from a third person point of view and then you control that character some people felt that it was an out of body experience and uh some people felt like they were remote controlling their body. So I found that very interesting. So today, I did a, a different experiment. It's not the sa exact same one, but uh, on the side there, I have a small corner for people to try out these goggles. But today, they do something different. When the two of them put on the goggles, uh, one participant will see from the perspective of the other participant, and the other participant will see from his friend. So their vision is swapped and then they try to find each other. So the experience is different because when they are finding their friend, 
visually they look like they are finding themselves because they f- their friend looks at them and he is seeing through his friend's view and so he looks like he's finding himself. So it's quite interesting. Later you can go and try it out. My next project, the web art movement. So this was uh, inspired by the internet. To me, humanity on a whole, to me it is like a super organism. We are one big uh, organism where we continue to learn and we continue to grow. Even after I die, the humanity will still continue to live on. I am probably like a cell just uh, doing my own thing and contributing to the experiences of this super organism. So recently there has been this invention called the internet, which I find that it is it helps this organism because it consolidates all of the organism's uh, memories from all these individual cells. All their individual cells are the humans, all of us. All our memories, and whoever decides to put their memories on online goes to the brain and stored for quite a long time. So the internet is, to me, a catalyst to improve and uh, change huma- uh, humanity because it, it improves communication and there's a central brain. And so when there's this central brain, the, the organism can continue to change and uh, improve very fast. So we have been living maybe 13, 14, 20 years of, uh, of this internet. And uh, relatively to the future, the internet is still very young. And uh, yep, the internet is young. So I decided to do something about it because some there are certain things that can only be done now when, when the internet is young. Maybe uh, 50 years later, it cannot be done anymore. So what I did was... Uh, Oh, oh yeah, before I tell you what I did, I need to tell you about when I was 11 years old. When I was 11 years old, I went, went online. Yeah, and, um, and I thought it was really cool uh, that there are all these websites. And I wanted to do my own website. But, uh, but I didn't know how. And there was nobody to ask. All my teachers were teaching, uh, uh, what was that? 11 years old, they were teaching maths and uh, English and Chinese. So, so nobody was, uh, nobody actually knew how to do it. And uh, so I didn't know. And back then my parents would tell me to just uh, focus on my studies. So that's what I did. And so the moment was past where, where, the, where I could be able to buy a short dot com and do something fun with it. The moment was past and now it's gone forever. But instead of living in regret that I wasn't smart enough when I was 11 years old, I look at the present when the internet is still pretty much young. Uh, Back then, when I was 11 years old, the internet was very, very young. But right now, it is still pretty young. So I decided to do, to buy 56 one-worded .sg domains. This cannot be done in the future. Maybe it cannot be done in the future because uh, maybe the internet only gets more crowded. I don't know, but before, before it cannot be done, I want to do it first. So what I did with all of them is I put them all on webart.sg where artists or anyone worldwide can adopt each domain for free. And uh, they do whatever they want with them. And at the end of the year, we have an exhibition. Yep, so that's the whole idea. It is like an artist residency, but at a virtual ad- address. Usually in an artist, uh, typical artist residency, you might fly over to Paris, stay there for a couple of months, and then produce a work. But uh, in this case, this virtual artist residency, you, you do it at home, and you access the internet, and you, you, you do your website. So I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, freedom and liberty. So. I would want the participants to do whatever they wanted, whether it is related to the domain name, maybe if they bought, if they adopted good.sg, if they did something bad, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell them to do otherwise, just do whatever. Because it is temporary, it only lasts for a year. So instead of a, you typically, when you want to design a website, you think of an idea and then, and then uh, 
you think of it long term and how it's going to make money next time, but, but no, we're not talking about that. We want to do something temporary. We want to do something fun and just, uh, just anything goes on these websites. We have currently 20 artists who have adopted domains and they have done very interesting things. So just to show you some examples is uh, pick.sg, adopted by a local artist, Debbie Ding. Uh, she felt that there was not enough pictures of the Singapore icon, the Malayan, on the internet. So she put up a portal where she allowed her friends and anyone to send her a request to draw the Malayan with whatever theme they wanted. So she got requests like, draw the Malayan with Justin Bieber. And uh, in this case, it is the Malayan as the Hello Kitty. Back then, there was the Hello Kitty craze. Yep. Strong.sg, this domain was uh, adopted recently by myself. It is uh, inspired by my girlfriend who was hospitalized and I was posting pictures up of her in the hospital telling, and then we were receiving uh, messages like stay strong, uh, keep going, Kareen, because she was in the hospital for meningitis, which is kind of the worst kind of infection to get. It is a brain infection. And why is the worst kind is, if you have an infection in your arm, you can cut off the arm and you can still live. But if you have an infection in your brain, you can't exactly live on without your brain. So a brain infection is the worst. So she had this infection. The causes of it was uh, quite interesting too because she has a uh, lupus from uh, age 12, uh, 20. She was diagnosed with lupus. It is an incurable disease that affects your immunity system. Your, so your immunity system, what it does is your immunity system will attack healthy cells like your kidneys and there is no cure for it. So the only treatment is to suppress the immunity, immunity system with a drug so that drug has uh, completely annihilated her immunity system such that she's susceptible to all kinds of diseases and this time she got meningitis. And because of lupus, right, she could not get insurance, health insurance, because she, since she's susceptible to all kinds of diseases, anything can be, can be pointed back to lupus and the insurers will, will not insure anything that is able to be pointed back to lupus. So we have a problem here. Uh, into the third day of the hospitalization, we received an estimated bill for the, for the three days and that was, that was about $2,000 for MRI scans. And we're like, wow, that's, that's a lot of money. So we asked the doctor, how long is she going to be staying here for? And then uh, the doctor told us an estimate of 16 days. So we calculated and estimated the amount of money that we, we need to amass to be able to pay this Tan Tok Sing hospital. Um, it ended up to be an amount of $10,000. So Karine doesn't come from a, from a wealthy family. So I wanted to help my girlfriend because she she's suffering and she's suffering and uh, with her headaches and and all her inability to move in the hospital already and yet she has to worry about uh, this financial financial problem. So without her knowledge, I went to fur further strong .sg into a sub domain, a sub website called stay .strong .sg, inspired by all the friends commenting, pouring in their love for her. So this website is a donation website I made, I made from scratch and I didn't expect it to, to uh, raise as much money. I, I, accept, I expected maybe 2000 and that would be great already. That would be fantastic. But within one week, we managed to raise the full amount, $10,000. One week, we were, we were so pleased and, uh, we, and we are very grateful to all who all who donated to, to us. So these two are just uh, examples of uh, what people can do with their domains. And uh, this strong.sg got the attention of the local press. This one is the new paper. So I'm appreciative that they 
they shared our story and also to raise the awareness of this terrible disease, lupus. Then comes to back to my project, the web art movement. I was thinking of how would I exhibit this web art movement because I have promised them that I will exhibit it somehow. So I was thinking about how to exhibit it. So I went to galleries, I talked to them, told them about my idea, and they, they were very excited. They thought that this was really radical and they wanted to show it. But the only problem that is uh, stopping them from giving me their full support was that the exhibition would not make them any money because these works do not sell. So, and they have to pay rent, right, the, these galleries. So they were, they were reluctant that way, but they still wanted the support. So I went back home to sleep and think about, thought about it. So I thought about why am I going around begging galleries to exhibit my work when I have a whole backyard of uh, virtual space. So I have uh, gallery.sg. I'm still thinking about it. It hasn't been uh, fully formed yet, but uh, gallery.sg, I'm planning to make it into a virtual gallery, a massive multiplayer online gallery, in a sense. When, when you go to gallery.sg, you will automatically control this character in this 3D world with your mouse and your keyboard, and you look around, you look at art, and then interact with people. I'm planning to have an opening for gallery.sg uh, featuring the web art movement. Um, so I want to have maybe 200 people in there at the same time. So it's going to have this whole gallery opening feel where there's a crowd, people are sipping wine, chatting. I want to recreate that whole gallery opening feeling virtually. So who is this future audience I am always thinking about? Uh, like I said, they are anyone in the future who might see my work. They are not, to me, they are, the future audience is not you. The future audience is actually, uh, where are the cameras? Oh, the future audience is here. Okay, hello, hello future audience, whoever you might be looking at this video. Yeah, yeah. So, the future audience is you, not not you, but them. I'm, I'm constantly, because of the inspiration I got from the people from the past, I realized that the audience, my audience, or your audience, whoever it might be, the majority of it is actually in the future, whoever they might be. Because maybe if, if you do work, and show it to the people of the present day, you maybe get like the max, a few billion views, but in the future, that few billion views would multiply because cause, um, a new population is born, a new generation. So the bulk, the bulk of the audience is always in the future, them. Some experiences that we can do now, they, they, cannot, they cannot replicate so maybe like uh, these days we're driving our own cars, maybe in the future, in the year 3000, they might have automatic cars and they would not know how, what it's like to drive their own cars. So uh, take this timeline and then um, there are these three circles, the past, present and the future. I would make the past and the present smaller because of the documentation that they have in the past, there's very little documentation to, to what we have now. And now, nowadays, almost everything is documented. But can you imagine in the future when the technology is even more advanced, everything else will be documented. Like maybe there'll be, there'll be CGTVs everywhere and people's uh, GPS route tracks will be, will be mapped daily. So things like that will be documented. That's why the circles are this way. So, uh, but instead of uh, talking about way, way back in the past or way, way back, uh, way, way to the future, I want to put a timeline, uh, a date on these circles. So the past is 1998, um, when I was 11 years old, and the present is 2013, and the future is 2050. So back when I was 11 years old, 
everyone in the future now was was my future audience. So um, then as we go on to the present, all that becomes experiences. And the thing about these experiences, right, there are some, there are some unanswered questions of the past that uh, only the past people can answer, but if they don't answer them, it goes unanswered. Things like, why did they build the Stonehenge? So no one knows. Or what if somebody decided to get all the dot-com domains, all the short dot-com domains, and give them out for free? Now we'll never know because they're all not available already. I guess uh, looking into the future, the real question is, uh, what will you answer for them? Or what experiences will you leave for them? Thank you very much. <laughs>